Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. I hope everyone had a fantastic 2019. I know we did at TFB TV. We crossed over 700,000 subs and over 200 million views. Thanks to you guys for watching. So I really appreciate that. Speaking of appreciation, Patreon supporters. Couldn't do it without you guys on Patreon and Subscribestar. Notwithstanding the fact that YouTube has demonetized like, um, I don't know, a third, a half of our videos. If it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. I always kind of like picking at your brains though on Patreon and Subscribestar. We do little giveaways and when we do a giveaway uh, every couple of weeks or so, I'll throw a form on there and just kind of take everybody's temperature on different things in the gun community. So what I did this year is I said, look, here's every gun TFB TV reviewed in 2019, like new guns that have been reviewed in 2019. So I sent the list to our Patreon and Subscribestar supporters. I said, look, pick as many as you like. What do you think are the top guns of 2019? And you guys picked them. So without further ado, top five guns of 2019. Rolling right into number five, the IWIT S12. 20% of you, one out of every five of you who answered the poll said that the IWIT S12 deserves to be called one of the best guns of 2019, and I would agree. In fact, I'm a little surprised because I thought that this was kind of like a specialty gun, like a boutique gun that wasn't going to generate a lot of interest, but you guys really did like this gun, and so did I. I mean, what's not to like? It's made by IWI, a reputable manufacturer. You get a whopping 15 rounds of 12 gauge in a three tube rotary system. It's an incredible design, it's a brilliant idea, and it's well executed. There have been rotating tube designs in the past, but this one is by far the best of them, and it's a semi-automatic. Not to mention all of those features, and you're only looking at about 1200 bucks street price, which is pretty good. I mean, that's less than like a Benelli, right? But it's also the little things that make this such a great gun. Like when you rotate the tube, it'll automatically drop your round in the next tube if you've got an empty chamber. You've got your number one tube, which is hot, and you can load your number two and number three tubes at the same time on either side of the gun while the gun's hot. That was another really cool feature. You've got full leg to pick a tinny rail across the top. It's just a well-designed gun and a compact package. I was really impressed and I truly thought that this was an innovative firearm. Apparently you guys agreed with me and that's why it's number five. Speaking of surprises, the CMMG Banshee 10 millimeter number four. I guess I'm not totally surprised, but I mean, to me, it's a pistol caliber carbine, a 10 mil, that's a big deal. That excites me, I like it. I didn't think you guys were gonna like it that much, but here we are and it's number four. And the CMMG Banshee is a fantastic little platform. It accepts Glock magazines, which is a huge plus, of course. An excellent M-lock handguard from CMMG. An ambidextrous safety, Magpul MOE grip. A brace with a quick detach sling attachment. A plate in front of the castle nut that's got two sling attachment points. A massive ambidextrous CMMG charging handle. And an awesome and effective four port brake. Another thing to think about, you guys are talking about a very nice house rolled receiver here. This isn't just some bullshit forged AR-15 or cast AR-15 lower. This is a custom made lower with a beveled and flared magazine well. This Banshee Mark 10 also uses a radial delayed blowback system. It's not just a straight blowback operating system. CMMG always puts together a very good firearm. So it's high quality and it's 10 millimeter and it's an AR and it takes Glock mags. That's really the cherry on top, right? Of course, you can get this gun in pistol configuration, just throw a brace on there, you're good to go. And you're going to have a lot of power with that 10 millimeter out of any barrel range that CMMG offers the Banshee in. I was really impressed with it and so was every fucking body else because CMMG sent out like 20,000 review copies and nobody knew how many review copies were out there. So when the embargo date comes up, all the videos drop in the same day and everybody was like, oh, well, a bunch of paid chills. No, not paid chills, just CMMG sending out 1 million copies of this gun for review and not telling anybody that they did that. 22% or about a quarter of you thought the CMMG Banshee in 10 millimeter was one of the best guns of 2019. Anyways, it's a pretty good gun. Deserves to be number four, totally. Now, number one, number two, number three, of course, you guys picked, but these would be my picks too. I'm not sure in what order, but these would definitely be my picks, and I love these three guns. In fact, I would say that these are three of the best guns of the past decade. 
Starting at number three, we've got the Glock 43X and the Glock 48. 20% of you said that the 43X deserved to be a top gun. 10% of you said the 48. The Glock 43X and the Glock 48 are the next step in Glock's single stack line. Of course, they started with the 42, which was a six round 380, then the 43, which was a six round single stack nine millimeter. Then you got the 43X and the 48. The 43X uses the Glock 43 slide, so it's got a very compact slide, but you've got a larger grip, a larger frame that you can get a full grip on. It's almost the same size two-dimensionally as the Glock 19, but it's so thin. It's only about an inch thin. Very easy to shoot, very concealable. I absolutely love this gun. It's one of my favorite handguns that Glock has ever made, if not one of my most favorite handguns of all time. And then you guys saw that Shield, Shield Arms, they're making 43X mags that hold 15 rounds, so you get the same capacity as a Glock 19, but in the Glock 43X size package. The Glock 48, basically a Glock 43X, just with a little bit longer barrel and slide, so you get a little bit additional sight radius, a little bit better ballistic performance, but it's basically the same gun. I love the Glock 43X. It's one of my favorite everyday carry guns, and I'm glad to see you guys like the 43X also. Speaking of excellent carry pistols, the SIG P365XL was your number two. 33% of you, one out of every three of you that took the poll, said that this deserves to be one of the top guns of 2019. And it's easy to see why. The SIG P365XL is a 12 plus one subcompact gun. It's like an inch thick, holds 12 rounds. You can get a full grip on it as opposed to the standards SIG P365, which was a 10 round gun, but a lot of people complain because you'd be dangling a pinky. So what are your options? Either you can get the extended magazine and get a little bit more grip, or you can do what they did with the SIG P365XL. Just make the frame bigger, make it a 12 plus one right out of the box, extend the barrel a little bit over the standard SIG P365, and you have still a very compact gun that is in fact much more shootable. Mother. Um, so here's the 365 standard. There's the iron sight group I just shot with the 365 XL. And this is only the third or fourth magazine that I have through this gun. By comparison, that's the first magazine I fired through it with the optic. This is with the iron sight. So that's got to be about two inches, almost one ragged hole at seven yards. I feel like I can shoot the SIG P365 very well because it has a great trigger, great three dot night sights right out of the box. So I was surprised when I shot the SIG P365XL and I shot it so much better than the standard SIG P365. Of course, it seems intuitive that you would say it's a bigger gun, you get more grip on it, you get longer sight radius, you're gonna be able to shoot it better, right? Well, yeah, obviously, but I didn't think that I was going to be able to shoot it that much better as I did. So I was really thrilled with the SIG P365XL. Of course, you also have the option to mount an RMR. I think the Romeo Zero will fit right on the SIG P365XL out of the factory, and it's a very, very, very tiny red dot sight that I reviewed at the same time as the SIG P365XL. I think that this gun is totally deserving of a spot in the top three guns, maybe the number one gun of 2019, and I'm glad you guys agree with me. Now, you guys already know what the number one gun of 2019 is. You already know it because half of you picked the h and SP5 to be the number one gun of 2019. Did you pick it just because it was fresh? Because it just came out like December 2nd? Or did you pick it because really it's one of the best guns that's been introduced this year? I would say the latter. Somebody call Carl, somebody call Hans. Now I have a machine gun, ho, ho, ho. This is the closest thing that H&K has introduced to the MP5, to the civilian market. No shortcuts, no bullshit, no cheaping out. This is an H&K MP5, semi-automatic, basically. I did a very thorough teardown of my H&K MP5, my parts build gun, versus this SP5. It's got everything that you want. You can throw an HK MP5 stock on there. It's got the tri lug mount for the barrel. It's also got the threaded adapter if you have a half by 28 direct thread silencer. Thank God it's got the paddle mag release. For some reason, HK didn't do a paddle mag release on the SP5K, which kind of pisses me off, and they didn't do it on the HK94. The HK94 they introduced a few decades ago, it was a civilian MP5, but it came with a 16-inch barrel, and you'd have to get it chopped if you wanted to make an 
SBR out of it. Well, now because of the whole brace thing, you don't have to do that. But the HK94 SP5K, no paddle mag release. That got Marco killed. Go rewatch Die Hard, the scene when they're on the conference room table, and Marco is standing and he's like shooting down Bruce Willis, and he's like, huh? Next time you have a chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. And that's when Bruce Willis is like, yeah, good point. Shoots Marco through the conference room table. But when he does that, Marco is sitting there fiddle farting with that shitty HK MP5 button mag release. Like that thing sucks. It's virtually unusable. So I am so, 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 so glad that they decided to go with the paddle mag release on the HK SP5. My only disappointment was the fact that they used the SP5K drum for the diopter sight. So it's not a true diopter sight. It's a rear, a notched rear drum rather than with the circular diopters, but whatever. I mean, you know, you can hawk that for 30 or 40 bucks and then for like 50, 55 bucks, you can buy the diopter rear drum and just put it on yourself with regular tools. So all in all, a huge win for H&K, a huge win for consumers. They're pricing them MSRP at 2,800 bucks, but we're seeing them, I mean, it's being gouged right now on Gunbroker, like we're seeing them for like 3,500 bucks. But I've seen them pop up on like pre-order lists for like $2,300, which is pretty decent. People complain that the price is too high, but I'm not really sure that it is. You've got the PTR, which is a pretty good clone, and it's selling for like $1,600 or $1,700 street price. So paying an additional premium, like six, $700 premium over that to get the genuine article, many people would consider to be a pretty good deal. You've even had boutique manufacturers making HK clones that have been pretty high quality, and they're selling them for just shy of three grand. So I think the price is right. They're gonna get their 2,200, 2,300, 2,500 bucks, whatever street price is gonna end up being on these. They're gonna get it. They're gonna sell a lot of these. You guys were really impressed. I thought that this was not even gonna be on the list because everybody was so effing pissed at how expensive they are. But again, for being a roller locking gun that uses a lot of precise machining, notwithstanding the fact, yeah, it just uses a stamp sheet metal receiver, it's an intricately designed and manufactured gun. So they're kind of expensive to make. And you guys have seen that with the third party copies and clones that have been sold on the market. So that wraps up the top five. We reviewed them, you guys chose them. Thanks a ton for everything you guys do for us. Supporters, non-supporters, viewers, subscribers, we don't care. If you're watching this video, we're all extremely grateful at TFB TV. But do us a favor, doesn't cost you a thing, hit that little subscribe button. You probably won't even get notified because YouTube's like not sending people notifications, even our subscribers, for our videos. But it helps us out tremendously if you subscribe. So do that for us. Guys, and thank you to the best sponsors of all time, Ventura Munitions, best ammo store on planet Earth. Not to mention Blue Alpha Gear, they make my favorite belt. Guys, thanks again. See you next year.